The cause of pulmonary hypertension starts with the heartworms themselves. They're sitting in the pulmonary arteries causing damage and they even release inflammatory mediators and factors that cause proliferation of the vascular smooth muscle and endothelium and increase the release of vasoconstrictive factors like endothelin 1. And so this leads to a balanced shift towards vasoconstriction and the development of pulmonary hypertension. To add insult to injury, the presence of worms themselves are in some sense obstructive and worms that are dying either naturally or because of melarsamine therapy lead to the development of thrombosis. So these dead fragmented worms are nidises for thrombus. Those can obstruct where they sit or they can embolize further down and, and completely obstruct some of the smaller pulmonary vasculature. The clinical recognition of pulmonary hypertension is usually ultrasound of the heart, looking for evidence of pressure load on the heart, so thickening of the right ventricle. The radiograph is not 100% sensitive or specific. In general, a patient that doesn't have pulmonary artery enlargement on radiographs probably doesn't have significant pulmonary hypertension. And again, echo is probably the best test for pulmonary hypertension. And in some cases, you can actually quantify the degree of pressure elevation. Um, with echocardiography. The clinical signs from pulmonary hypertension are usually exercise intolerance, they may be coughing or short of breath, all the way to cyanosis and even syncope. The therapy for pulmonary hypertension usually involves a vasodilator, which is sildenafil or Viagra. It's a pulmonary artery vasodilator. For the more severely affected patients, oxygen therapy and of course rest and in many cases, the, the best way to try to prevent this complication um, is uh, exercise restriction of the patient that has heartworm infection. And so the prognosis with pulmonary hypertension is, can be a little more difficult to uh, determine, but in many cases, there's a degree of reversibility to this pulmonary hypertension. So in this case, the patient will respond to sildenafil or if they're more severely affected, oxygen. In the severely ill patient, this response is helpful for prognosis. So if there is a good degree of reversibility, they'll respond during hospitalization and can be discharged on sildenafil and oxygen. In the case where they're not responsive, our concern for pulmonary thromboembolism rises from heartworm PTE and you may want to add an antithrombotic therapy, which includes antiplatelet drugs like clopidogrel or an anticoagulant.